Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about DNA repair mechanisms and their associated syndromes. So why is this relevant to the USMLE Step 1? Well, DNA repair mechanisms play an important role in preserving DNA stability and preventing lethal DNA mutations. Also, various important cancer syndromes exist which are believed to be caused by problems with DNA repair mechanisms. Today we will break down each of the five major DNA repair mechanisms and also mention the important cancer syndromes associated with each. DNA stability or the ability to prevent alterations in the DNA sequence is essential for survival. For this reason, numerous mechanisms exist to maintain DNA stability. These mechanisms fall into two broad categories. These are DNA proofreading, typically performed by DNA polymerase, and DNA repair mechanisms. We talked about DNA polymerase in our previous video titled DNA replication. Today, we will talk about DNA repair mechanisms. Specifically, we will talk about nucleotide excision repair, base excision repair, mismatch repair, homologous recombination, and non-homologous end joining. We will start with nucleotide excision repair, or NER. NER is responsible for repairing bulky DNA lesions which distort the normal helix configuration of DNA. Examples of bulky DNA lesions fixed by NER include thymine dimers and 4-6 photoproducts. These lesions typically occur due to exposure to solar radiation. What is important to know about these lesions is that they are constantly occurring. If these lesions are not repaired before DNA replication, they can cause DNA polymerase to misread and insert the wrong base pair. This would lead to mutations. For this reason, Effective NER mechanisms are required to combat this kind of DNA damage. Dysfunctions of the enzymes involved in NER lead to syndromes associated with early onset skin cancer such as xeroderma pigmentosum. We will talk more about xeroderma pigmentosum in later videos. Here we can see a visual illustration of the steps involved in NER. First, a bulky DNA lesion such as a thymine dimer or 4-6 photoproduct is detected by specialized NER enzymes which scan DNA. So for example, here I have drawn a thymine dimer. Now a thymine dimer is an interaction between two adjacent thymines on the same strand. This is not normal. Thymines and all nucleotides should only interact with the nucleotide on the other strand. However, when you have a thymine dimer, you form abnormal bonds. So for example, let's, let's pretend that right here we have a strand of DNA, we have another strand of DNA, and we have nucleotides here and nucleotides here. Let's say that these are two thymines. When you have a thymine dimer, these thymines, which are adjacent to each other, will actually form abnormal covalent bonds. This is not good because it can cause DNA polymerase to misread and insert the wrong nucleotide during DNA replication. Once a specialized NER enzyme finds a thymine dimer or other helix disturbing lesion, it will bind to it and recruit other NER enzymes. These new enzymes open up the DNA double strand and cleave a 25 to 50 nucleotide strand of DNA containing the lesion. So for example, here we can see that the strand that contains the thymine dimer is cut away and removed. So you're left with a piece of DNA that is single-stranded. Once the strand has been removed, DNA polymerase comes in and rebuilds the strand with new nucleotides. Finally, you're left with normal, healthy DNA. This mechanism is extremely important because thymine dimers, these things right here, are constantly being formed like hundreds to thousands of times per day so without these mechanisms these thymine dimers would accumulate and you would get DNA mutations which would lead to cancer such as in xeroderma pigmentosum the next DNA repair mechanism we will talk about is base excision repair or BER unlike NER BER is responsible for repairing non-bulky DNA lesions such as those caused by chemical alterations in the nitrogenous bases of DNA. Much like how DNA is constantly being attacked by solar radiation, creating thymine dimers and 4-6 photoproducts, 
DNA is also being attacked by chemical reactions such as oxidations, deaminations, and alkylations. These chemical reactions damage the nitrogenous base on DNA which if left unrepaired before DNA replication can cause DNA polymerase to misread the DNA and insert the wrong nucleotide, similarly to in thymine dimers. Here we can see a visual illustration of the steps involved in base excision repair. Let's go over them together. First, a special enzyme called glycosylase scans DNA looking for base pairs which contain altered nitrogenous bases such as deaminations, alkylations, and oxidations. You do not need to be familiar with the chemical pathways that lead to deaminations, alkylations, and oxidations, but I do want you to be familiar with what they create. A deamination refers to a reaction which removes a nitrogen atom from a nitrogenous base. An alkylation, on the other hand, refers to a chemical interaction that adds additional carbon atoms to a nitrogenous base. And an oxidation refers to a chemical reaction which adds an oxygen atom to a nitrogenous base. These modifications are bad because they can cause DNA polymerase to misread, so they must be repaired. Once a glycosylase enzyme finds an altered base, it will bind to it and remove the damaged base leaving behind the ribose and phosphate groups still in the DNA molecule. So glycosylase has two functions. It identifies a damaged or altered base and it also removes the nitrogenous base by itself. The DNA backbone is not touched by glycosylase. This is called an apyrimidemic or apyrinic site. Glycosylase then recruits an enzyme called AP endonuclease which cuts the phosphodiester backbone of DNA and removes the rest of the nucleotide components, namely the ribose and phosphate group that were left behind by the glycosylase. So here we can see our AP endonuclease cutting the DNA backbone. Finally, DNA polymerase comes in and adds the missing nucleotide and you're left with normal DNA. So what you need to know regarding base excision repair is that it's responsible for fixing non-bulky, non-DNA disturbing lesions such as those found when a nitrogenous base is chemically modified. Now there's another type of DNA lesion that is repaired by base excision repair. So in DNA, you have thymine. However, occasionally a type of chemical reaction may occur where a thymine is converted to a uracil. Now uracil is only found in RNA. So when this occurs, uracil must be converted back to thymine. So basic excision repair will identify a uracil in DNA and it will remove that uracil and replace it with thymine. That's another mechanism that you should be familiar with in regards to basic excision repair. So in summary, whenever you have a nitrogenous base that has been chemically modified, such as the addition or loss of an atom, typically this will be repaired by a base excision repair system. Next we will talk about mismatch repair. Mismatch repair is responsible for repairing mismatched base pairs after DNA replication. Occasionally DNA polymerase inserts the wrong nucleotide despite DNA polymerase proofreading activity. When this occurs, it is up to the mismatch repair mechanism to fix the error. Problems with the mismatch repair system can lead to hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer syndrome or HNPCC. In this disorder, a mutation in the MLH1 and MSH2 gene leads to problems with the mismatch repair system and this leads to the condition known as HHPCC. MLH1 and MSH2 are genes that are believed to produce protein required for successful operation of the mismatch repair system. Here we can see the steps involved in the mismatch repair system. Let's go over them together. First, specialized enzymes involved in the mismatch repair system scan DNA for mismatch nucleotides. Once these enzymes find a mismatch, they will then recruit other enzymes which will identify the parent strand. You can see that in our illustration there is a mismatch. T is incorrectly paired with G. So if you remember, T or thymosine only binds with adenosine and G, guanine, only binds with cytosine, so this is an error. Let's also assume that for the purpose of this illustration, the yellow strand is the parental strand, or the original DNA strand, and the blue strand is the daughter strand, or the newly made DNA strand. 
Once a DNA mismatch has been identified and the parental strand has also been identified, a short strand of DNA containing the mutation will be removed. This is typically from the daughter strand. This strand can be anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand nucleotides in length. So for example, here we can see that the part of the daughter strand that contains the mutation is removed and discarded. So again, just like an NER, you are left with a part of the DNA that is single-stranded. Lastly, the gap in the DNA is filled in by DNA polymerase and you are left with a normal double-stranded DNA molecule with the correct nucleotide pairing and sequence. This mechanism is most active after DNA replication because it functions to correct any errors that might have escaped DNA proofreading mechanisms. Now we will talk about homologous recombination. While the other types of repair mechanisms that we have discussed so far fix problems with nitrogenous bases or nucleotides, homologous recombination fixes breaks in the DNA strand. Generally, when it comes to repairing breaks in DNA, there are two mechanisms one more effective than the other. These mechanisms include homologous recombination and non-homologous end joining, which we will discuss next. Homologous recombination is considered more effective than non-homologous end joining because it always restores DNA to the correct configuration, that is, how it was before the damage. This is because homologous recombination uses the homologous chromosome as a template for repairing the damaged DNA. While this method of strand repair is very effective, it requires that the homologous chromosome is fully intact. Syndromes associated with problems with homologous recombination include Bloom syndrome and breast ovarian cancer syndromes, specifically BRCA1 and BRCA2. The BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes produce a protein which are believed to be associated with homologous recombination system of DNA repair. The steps for homologous recombination are fairly complex and involve specialized DNA structures called duplexes. You do not need to be familiar with the specific details of homologous recombination, however, I will draw out some simplified steps of how the process goes so you can conceptualize this. So first, let's imagine that you have two chromosomes, each with double-stranded DNA. You have a chromosome here, which has double-stranded DNA, and then we have another chromosome up here, which is our damaged chromosome. Let's imagine that it looks something like this. And as you can see, each strand is broken. This is a double-stranded break. So what happens is that through a process known as strand invasion, the broken strands will pull out a piece of the intact DNA on the homologous chromosome and use it as a template. With this template, the breaks will be repaired. So we can imagine that DNA polymerase would come in and fill up this break. And then if one strand is fixed, then you can use that strand to fix the other strand. And all of a sudden, you have two chromosomes that are intact. This is a very simplified explanation of homologous recombination. What you need to know is that even though it's a very complex process, it results in chromosomes that are structurally identical to how they were before the damage. This is a very good way of fixing double-stranded and single-stranded DNA breaks. This brings us to the last DNA repair mechanism, non-homologous end joining. Like homologous recombination, non-homologous end joining repairs double-stranded DNA breaks. Unlike homologous recombination, non-homologous end joining does not require a homologous chromosome as a template. However, the result of this is that occasionally non-homologous end joining will reconnect DNA strands incorrectly. This can lead to structural mutations such as translocations, deletions, inversions, etc. This is because since there is no homologous template, sometimes DNA breaks are randomly reconnected in ways that they were not supposed to be connected. This function of non-homologous end joining is associated with a type of severe combined immunodeficiency which is a type of severe dysfunction of the immune system. Just like homologous recombination, non-homologous end joining is an extremely complex process and you do not need to know the individual steps and details. However, in order for you to better conceptualize this, I will draw a very simple illustration of the steps. So for example, let's imagine a situation where multiple chromosomal breaks exist. So for example, let's draw out a chromosome 12 and we'll call it purple there is a double-stranded break right there. 
Now let's draw out another chromosome, let's call it chromosome 15, which is unrelated, and let's say that there is also a chromosomal break right there. Well, what can happen in non-homologous end joining is two things. You can either have both of these chromosomes be connected in the correct way, which would be good, or occasionally they're corrected incorrectly. So for example, chromosome 15 might be connected to chromosome 12 and vice versa. This would lead to a chromosome 12 that has components of chromosome 15. So if we remember correctly from our DNA mutations lecture, this is an example of a translocation. Specifically, this would be a 12-15 translocation. Now it's important to remember that non-homologous end joining doesn't always result in abnormal DNA repair. There are a lot of instances where non-homologous end joining actually corrects DNA in the correct way. However, what you need to know is that it's not as accurate as homologous recombination. So in summary, DNA is constantly being damaged and altered. DNA repair mechanisms are required to ensure genomic stability, which is required for survival. NER is responsible for repairing bulky DNA lesions caused typically by solar radiation, such as thymine dimers and 4-6 photo products. BER is responsible for repairing DNA lesions called by chemical alterations of the nitrogenous basis, such as deamination, alkylation, oxidation, and conversion of thymine to uracil. MR is responsible for repairing mismatched nucleotides after DNA replication. Homologous recombination and non-homologous end joining are responsible for repairing single and double-stranded DNA breaks. Homologous recombination being more accurate than non-homologous end joining, which has a risk of a structural chromosomal mutation. So that concludes our lecture on DNA repair mechanisms. See you on the next lecture.